Shifra River, yes, it is pronounced right as it is of Irish descent, is one of the most beautiful environments in Elden Ring. It has a ton of verticality, a ton of items to find, and a ton of things to discover, which can also make it very confusing and cause you to miss some things along your way. Here is everything you might have missed in Shifra River. Oracle Bubbles Starting from the lift that takes you down to Shifra River, which if you don't know where that is, is east of the Minor Erd Tree and Limgrave, or you can start at the Shifra River Well Grace, you want to head northeast and make your way up the steps of these ruins, and then subsequently around the backside of the ruins. Here you'll have to do some jumping and parkour, so watch your step and do your best to uh, not look down, which will definitely end up making you look down anyway, so just don't mess up, okay? Once you make it across the ruins, you'll come to a hole in the floor, and when you look through it, you'll see a scarab that when you slay it will give you the Oracle Bubble spell. Armorer's Cookbook 6 Starting from the Schieffer River Bank Grace, head northwest and jump up these rocks. Take a left, and shortly after, you'll see a body that the Armorer's Cookbook 6 is located on. This cookbook can be incredibly valuable later on in your journey throughout Elden Ring, as it gives you the ability to craft preserving boluses that allow you to cure Scarlet Rot, which, if you haven't already figured it out, can be incredibly deadly. Hornbow. Starting from the Schieffer River Bank Grace again, this time head east until you reach this cliff edge. There will be an area for you to jump to that is beneath the stairs that you go up to to access one of the boss areas. Here you'll find a body that has the horn bow on it. The horn bow is special due to the fact that it is the only bow in Elden Ring that is capable of doing magic damage. We also think it looks kind of cool too. Square off Ash of War. Starting from, you guessed it, the Shifra River Bank Grace, head northeast. Not far from the Grace, you'll see a little island that has a teleporter on it. Take that teleporter and it will teleport you to the upper level of Shifra River. Head northwest once you've been teleported and you'll see another scarab. Do what you do with scarabs and you'll be the owner of the Square Off Ash of War that balances strength and dexterity scaling for straight swords. Dwelling Arrows Starting from where you get the square off Ash of War, you'll want to head south until you reach where we put this marker on the map. Once you're there, you'll want to find the airlift and then use Torrent to jump to the top of this broken bridge. In between the two sections of the bridge, there is a precarious way for you to make your way down. Follow us and once you've made your way to the bottom, you will see a body with an item on it. That item is the Dwelling Arrows, which are magic arrows that work perfectly with the horn bow that we showed you earlier. Abandoned Merchant From the Worshipper's Woods Grace, head southwest avoiding the little lightning balls until you find a wood structure that is built into the side of the bridge pillars. Head on around and you'll find some wooden stairs that lead to a ladder. Climb the ladder and continue making your way around until you see the wooden bridge. You want to cross the bridge and continue going straight along the path beneath the waterfall where you'll then find a room that you can jump down into. In this room, you'll find the abandoned merchant that has some great stuff for sale, like some cookbooks to expand your crafting repertoire or a larval tier that you can use to respect your character if you've beaten Ranala. Great Oracular Bubble from the Worshipper's Woods Grace yet again, head south through the giant trees until you see a stone column that has fallen. Make your way to the top of that column and you'll find a teleporter that takes you here. Take a quick second to enjoy the view and then head west. You'll find a very dark room with a rather weird amount of enemies in it. In the back of the room will be another scarab that has the Great Oracular Bubble spell. This spell casts one giant bubble that does a pretty decent amount of damage, so if you're running a magic build in Elden Ring, this might be a fun spell to add to your arsenal. Dragon Halberd On this point on the map that we've marked, if you look northwest, you'll see a lonely dragonkin soldier just hanging out. 
We do want to mention that this boss did get the oh so important honor of being on our weirdest looking bosses list. If you're decently leveled up, you shouldn't have any problems with this boss. Once defeated, you'll get this sweet looking dragon halberd that has a spinning slash skill that has an added lightning effect to really just make it pop. Merica's Scar Seal. In the same spot where you fight the dragonkin soldier, if you look northeast, you'll see a waterfall. Behind the waterfall will be the Merica Scar Seal Talisman that raises attributes but also raises damage taken. This talisman can be incredibly useful, depending on your build, of course, because it raises your mind, intelligence, faith, and arcane stats. Golden Seed and Rune Arc. Continuing from where you found Merica's Scar Seal, head south and take a quick left down a path that goes downhill. Follow this path north until you reach this jump down spot. From here, you'll see a golden seed that can help you upgrade your flask. From the Golden Seed, continue northwest, keeping the outside of the building on your left. The path will get more narrow, but keep following it until you find an opening in a cave. There will be a body in the cave that has a rune arc on it. Ancestor Spirit This boss fight requires you to do a little bit of prep work. We've gone ahead and marked where all of the braziers are on the map that you'll need to light in order to gain access to this boss. Follow our steps closely to make sure that you don't miss a single brazier as you'll need all of them to be ignited to continue to the next step. Once all the braziers have been lit, you'll want to head up these stairs by the Schieffer Riverbank Grace that has a decrepit moose looking creature at the top of them. If you have all the braziers lit, this creature will have a tealish aura and flames surrounding it. Go up to it and interact with it and you'll be teleported to the boss arena. While it isn't the strongest boss, it is one of the more unique ones in the game, so it is definitely worth going to experience for yourself. A secret exit. From the Below the Well Grace, head north up the stairs. At the top of the stairs, there will be a lift that can only be activated once you use a stone sword key. This long, magical elevator ride will actually take you up to Kaelid. The more you know. Model Necklace. For this item, you'll want to start at the four belfries in Liurnia. From the Grace here, you want to go left and you'll find a chest that contains an imbued sword key. You will need this imbued sword key to continue on with this. Head south and you'll find a teleporter close by that can only be activated with that imbued sword key. Once teleported, take a mandatory 5 seconds to enjoy this absolutely beautiful view and then cautiously make your way down this incredibly tedious path. Doing your best to let gravity not take away too much of your health. At the bottom, you'll see a body that has the modeled necklace talisman and also has a crucible knight to fight if you just want to go assert your dominance. The modeled necklace talisman boosts your robustness, immunity, and focus. So there you have it, some things you might have missed in your exploration of Schieffer River, and maybe you learned how to pronounce Schieffer River for yourself. If there's any other places you would like for us to break down next, let us know in the comments, and if you enjoyed or found this helpful, consider leaving a like and subscribing for future videos, and we'll see you in the next one.